Hi guys and welcome back to Rich Reviews. And today you join us back in the garage again today at the heady temperature of, what is it? 5.8 degrees with 82% humidity. That's very relevant because today we're gonna to talk about dehumidifiers. I teased you about a new de dehumidifier that I was purchasing and the dehumidifier is to resolve the, the moisture issue that exists in the garage and especially in garages in the UK. And uh, so today we're going to talk about dehumidifiers. Now, first of all, we're aiming to get 1,000 subscribers by the end of this year, so if you're not subscribed already, please think about doing so, and please share the channel amongst your friends. We're really keen to move this channel forward and to get those magical 1,000 subscribers. So um, for those who are already subscribed and are staying subscribed, and my loyal subscribers, thank you very much for staying with the channel. Great new content to come. So, we've got here the EcoAir DD128. Now, first of all, I'm gonna address why do we need a dehumidifier? Okay, you've probably heard the terms RH percentage, okay, which is relative humidity percentage. Now what that actually means is the amount of moisture in, in the air relative to how much that air can contain of moisture relative to a particular temperature. So if you've got the temperature like it is now, which is 5.8 degrees centigrade, the actual relative humidity is 82%. That means that the actual air at the temperature of 5.8 degrees out of the 100% moisture that the air can contain is actually containing 82%. So it's actually very high humidity. Now it's not as high as it has been. It has been over 90% here. Um, and that's because we're using a dehumidifier. It is improving things, but um, to, to vastly improve the situation in the garage, we're gonna to have to seal the garage out better. And that means one of the major benefits towards that is resolving that garage door. That garage door has got leaks all over it. It's letting um, the atmosphere in. Now, of course, you need ventilation in the garage. Otherwise, um, the moisture will actually retain on, on colder objects. Um, but it's too much ventilation and you need to try and seal out a garage as best as possible. So as if you haven't um, seen the video already, please look at the um, doorway to my Ferrari video, that, uh, which is listed below. Um, that video talks about the conversion of the garage door from an up and over to a Horman sectional door. Now I've used dehumidifiers before, and the version I used before is a very common one used amongst the guys who have dehumidifiers in the garage, and that was the DD8L, the Miko DD8L. Now, I had problems with that dehumidifier, it failed after a year and those, those items or at the time only had one year warranty, so of course it's out of warranty, it only lasted a year and of course that's not very good. Um, then they're not overtly expensive but they're expensive enough that you need them to last more than a year. So that put me off the Miko products, especially as it ran out of warranty and of course you try and get Miko to repair the unit um, when it's run out of warranty and it's failed, you know, slim chance. Now, there's different types of dehumidifiers. There's refrigerant types, um, and also there's desiccant dehumidifiers. Now, refrigerant de dehumidifiers are actually by far the most efficient and the most uh, stable and the longest lasting. Um, they last a lot longer than desiccant dehumidifiers. This is an EcoAir DD128, and it's a desiccant dehumidifier. So, you must be thinking, okay, so why have I bought a desiccant dehumidifier when they're not as long lasting as refrigerant? That's because the temperatures in, in the UK garage are well below 10 degrees for all of the winter. And predominantly, you need a dehumidifier during the winter. So, you need a dehumidifier to be able to work and operate as efficiently as possible below 10 degrees. Refrigerant dehumidifiers do not work efficiently below 10 degrees and they won't work at freezing point. They just freeze up and they're continually trying to defrost. They go into what's called a defrost mode and they spend 70 to 80% of their time in a defrost mode trying to defrost themselves and not actually trying to remove the moisture from, from the air. Um, desiccant de dehumidifiers aren't as efficient as refrigerant dehumidifiers when refrigerant de dehumidifiers are in 10 plus degrees, but desiccant dehumidifiers 
work linearly across any temperature and by that I mean that at zero degrees, 10 degrees, 15 degrees, 20 degrees they'll work comparable so they'll, they'll extract the same, relatively though, they'll extract approximately the same amount of moisture out of the air and um, it's not temperature relevant with regards to the operation of the device. Obviously it's temp temperature relevant with the amount of, of uh, moisture that the air can contain as I've already talked about with the relative humidity scale. Now, I've chosen, um, this time I've chosen an Eco Air model. I've researched it and I've chosen an Eco Air model, um, the DD128 as opposed to choosing a Mico model. Now this EcoAir DG128, one of the core requirements for me choosing it was it's got a two year warranty. So if it fails after a year, then I can get it repaired. And you know, if it fails after two years, I'm not too worried at the price point. Um, it was circa 150 pounds, circa around that point. So the desiccant dehumidifier that I chose was the EcoAir DD128. Now this dehumidifier, is a desiccant dehumidifier as I detailed before as opposed to a refrigerant dehumidifier. How desiccant dehumidifiers actually work is if you if you remember the that when you have when you purchase electronic devices you have a silica gel pack commonly one or two silica gel packs in the packaging that's because those silica gel packs absorb moisture. Now desiccant dehumidifiers work on the same principle they have a wheel that rotates in the device, much like a carousel wheel if you like. And on the carousel wheel is packages of desiccant. And that desiccant is called is typically zeolite or zeolite, depends how you want to pronounce it. Now that desiccant, that desiccant product absorbs moisture. Now what happens is the the carousel is continually rotating. This is what you can hear at the moment. You can hear the fan going and a continual rotating motor, which is the desiccant um, rotating on the carousel. Now, when the particular level of uh, desiccant comes to the top, air is passed through it. The air from this room is passed over the, over the desiccant. The desiccant absorbs moisture. It comes down to where there's a heater. That heater forces the desiccant, the zeolit, to expunge the water, to release the water, which goes down and drips down either to the to the flow out pipe if you've got a continued flow, or to the actual reservoir. Then the desiccant goes round again, absorbs moisture from the air, and then comes round is heated, and then releases the moisture into the reservoir. And this is a continual cyclic process. Now, obviously, there's not just one package of zeolite on the on the carousel. It's all over the carousel. So you've got this acting real time, continually, all the time. And the byproduct of this process is that you get a, a slight amount of warmth as heat coming out um, through the top of the the um, vents. And that's because obviously the desiccant is heated by a heater. Now that's good because it slightly increases the temperature inside the room. As you can see here we've also got veins and these veins are adjustable so that that warm air coming out of the unit can actually, um, we can direct the air to wherever we want that air to be. Now these veins can be directed in many different ways. It can be directed so that it continually moves, so it directs the warm air, um, it displaces the warm air at different levels or you can configure it so as the fan, so sorry, so as the vein actually moves up and down or is permanently level. This actually directs the air so it's permanently level. So it's horizontal so the air comes out, the warm air comes out horizontally. If you then switch it to the top level then the veins are directed fully up in the air so obviously the warmth is directed up and it will stay in that position. And if you want the airs if you want it continually moving forwards and backwards to direct the air at different angles then you put it onto this motion, into this setting and you'll see the veins actually move down to a level point and then come back up again. There we go. Now also you've got a few other options on this dehumidifier. Um, you've got a nice carrying handle which is very useful which is a lot better than the, the previous model. I had the, the Miko DD8L, did not have a carrying handle. It was very cumbersome, so when you carried that device around, you actually ma had to manhandle it around. Now, it's, it's not too heavy, but it's still not as good as if you've got a dedicated handle to carry the unit around. 
Also with this product, you've got a deionizer or rather an ionizer. Now that obviously cleanses the air. So if I switch this on, it's actually ionizing the air. Now that would be, obviously <laughs> doesn't make any difference for us for a supercar ionizing the air, but if you've got a deionizer in the house, then it makes a lot of difference. It cleans the air and makes it a lot more habitable and better for human beings and, and for animals. But I don't have that switched on because it takes up more power. Now that's one of the other things about desiccant dehumidifiers with regards to refrigerant de dehumidifiers. Desiccant dehumidi dehumidifiers, because they've got a heater in them, takes up more energy. Now it's negligible how much more energy, it all depends on if you've got it on a higher setting, if you've got it on the economy setting, etc, etc, but they do take up more energy than a refrigerant dehumidifier, so that's something to take into account. If you don't need a desiccant dehumidifier, then it's better to go for a refrigeration dehumidifier because they're more efficient, lower power, so more economical to run, and they last longer, so they're more stable. Also, with this with this setting, you've got three with the with the actual moisture removal setting. You've got three options. Just switch this fan unit off. You've got the economy mode, which we're on at the moment. You've got the boost mode that, you, that we've got at the moment that stays constantly at this higher level, at this higher boost mode. And then you've got the boost mode. That is um, that switches into economy mode. So what this what this current mode does is it will remove the moisture out of the air as quickly as possible to get it down to circa 45 to 60 RH percentage, and then it will drop down to economy mode. Don't want to use that mode in the garage because the RH level in the garage never drops at the moment below 80 because as I've detailed before, the situation with the garage door. Um, when we sealed out the garage and upgraded the garage door to the Horman sectional door as detailed in my um, as detailed in my doorway to my Ferrari if you haven't seen that video catch the link below and uh, then that will, that will seal up the garage a lot better which will uh, will or should reduce the RH level which make it a lot more efficient using a dehumidifier now we've noticed that this dehumidifier does actually work even though the RH level is still quite high here it's reduced the RH level considerably it's usually around 90 so it's, it's at the moment it's running at 79 now Earlier it was around 81, now it's running at 79. In addition to the previous modes I've discussed, remember that remembering that this dehumidifier can be used inside the house as well as you know in the garage. It's, it's predominantly for indoors, but it can be used outdoors, whereas the refrigerant dehumidifiers can't be used in a garage below 10 degrees. This also has laundry mode. Now with laundry mode you've got a lower setting and a higher setting. I'll just switch it on to the lower setting you'll see that lower setting is still a lot, um, a lot more powerful, a lot more of a boost mode than compared to the economy mode. And if I switch it into the, the high laundry mode, the fan stays the same, but it actually stays on that setting for longer. Now, what those laundry modes do, just switch it out to a quieter mode. What those laundry modes do is when you've done your washing and you put your, your laundry out inside a house on a dryer, there's, that produces a lot of moisture in the air. Now you can dry your laundry a lot quicker if you use a dehumidifier to remove the moisture from the air. Um, it actually does dry the laundry a lot better and it does work, it's a lot more efficient at drying your, drying your laundry. So it is a very good, um, good fun uh, it, so it is a very good level of functionality to have in a device. Now, this unit has a 2.2 litre reservoir, fluid reservoir. Now, as I detailed earlier, you can also have a continual flow out from this device without using reservoir, um, continual flow. Um, it provides you a pipe that's about a meter long, which is <laughs> about this long. Now, that's good for no man. Um, I'm not using a continual flow out because the pipe isn't long enough. I need to get another pipe. At the moment, I'm emptying this reservoir twice a day. So I'm emptying it late in the evening and first thing in the morning to enable the unit to carry on functioning. Now, when you empty the device, it's running at the moment, and you can see that when I pull the reservoir, you can actually leave it connected, you can leave it switched on. When I pull the reservoir, the device will switch. It will switch off from actually functioning as a dehumidifier because it senses that I've removed the reservoir and it prevents water from leaking into the device, which of course you don't want. Now, a lot of other dehumidifiers don't have that capability. And even if you switch them off, 
then when you've removed the device, water will still leak. And the thing about switching these devices off, I've just put the tray back in and you've got a, I should let, let you see as well, you've got a lovely carrying handle there. So when you've removed the tray, got a nice carrying handle. So you take it over to your sink or wherever you're gonna expel the water. You lift up the corner and you pour out the water that's in here to actually empty the, the reservoir. Then you put the lid back down, make sure that's closed properly. You put the handle back down and then you pop this back in. And if you watch the device, you'll see that when I slide the reservoir back in, it then recognizes that it's back in and switches the dehumidifier section back on again. Now, one of the things about using a de dehumidifier, you've got to be careful when you switch the devices off with an automated clock system that's functioning on the mains. You've got to let the system cool down. And when you switch the system off using the actual device, using the on and off button, you'll see I've switched it off now and it carries on running. It's carrying on running because it needs to cool down. It needs to cool its internals down because it's been using a heater. If you use a device, say for example a clock on the on the 13 amp plug, 13 amp in the UK of course, then what will happen is it will obviously it will cut the power to unit and it will switch off straight away. Um, now what that will what that could how that could cause problems is that the heater will still have residual heat there, which will be pushing the residual heat on a on a single portion of the carousel on the desiccant, and it could have problems where it could reduce the capability and maybe cause burning on the actual zeolid on the on the desiccant because you've got continual heat, it's not cooling down. What this what this does if you switch it off on the actual unit and let it cool itself down, the carousel keeps spinning round and it switches the heater off and lets the system cool down properly. And then once it's once it's sensed that it's cool, it then switches itself off. So you shouldn't actually put a time device on this to switch it off. You should switch it off using the actual buttons on top. Now with other devices like the Miko Zambezi, um, they actually have a scheduler on the system, but that's like, you know, about another 70 odd pounds for that device, 60 or 70 pounds. And I just didn't need that functionality for the garage. And that Miko Zambezi, yes, it can be used in garages, because again, because it's a desk and dehumidifier, it will work um, from uh, 10 degrees and below, and of course above 10 degrees, but it's predominantly a house-based dehumidifier and it's just overkill for using in a garage like I am. You just really need the single option in the garage. This this unit and it's, um, pretty much is overkill for the garage as well, but the DD128 is a good stable a unit. Um, you get the, the larger reservoir and you get some of the extra capabilities which are useful for the garage. As you see, this unit's still running at the moment. It's still cooling down. So just switch the unit back on. It was just about to switch off there. You heard the relay click. <laughs> Um, so I'll just switch the unit back on, it'll come back up and it'll carry on operating now. And I'll use the device here by the car, not because, not because I particularly want it to focus on the car, because it makes no difference, obviously it's removing moisture from the, from the whole garage, it's just because that's a nice tidy area for it to be. And I set the fan by letting it switch on full mode and then letting it displace, I uh, drop it down to about a little bit of an angle and then if you switch that off totally, if you switch the, the functionality of the, of the moving louvers off, then you can lock it at a single position so you can fix the, the position of the louvers and the slats so as you direct the warmth to the exact position where you want it to be directed to. One of the other benefits of this unit as well is if you just come around the other way, you can see that there's a level indicator for the moisture, for the water. There's a level indicator for the reservoir. So you can see how much water is in the actual reservoir. And it's, it's quite easy to see then. And then it's quite easy to see when you're a distance away from the dehumidifier. Say if you just walk in the garage, it's quite easy to see if it's about to be, um, if it's about to be full up, uh, which will turn the device off. Because it won't carry on, obviously, when it's reached a certain level it will then switch the dehumidifier off and then of course it's not working. So you need to get to a stage where you're emptying the reservoir on a regular basis before it switches off if you want it to carry on working as the dehumidifier. Um, or of course, if you've got a continual outlet working, then that's fine. You can, um, you can just leave it switched on all the time and the, and the fluid will not, be go, will not go into the reservoir, it'll just go out through the actual pipe and exit out of the unit. So, so that's the EcoAir 
DG128. By the way, the DG means desiccant dehumidifier. I've kept on saying that and I realised I hadn't actually told you what it means. So desiccant dehumidifier, um, model number 128. At the moment it's working great. Uh, I haven't had it long enough to know if it's stable and if it's, um, if it's not going to break down. And if it does break down, as I said before, this has got a two year warranty as opposed to the Miko DD8L, which I had before, which only had a one year warranty. So I should be pretty well covered. So that's the DD8, DD, so that's the Desiccant Dehumidifier EcoAir DD128. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you want to know any more information about this dehumidifier, then please drop some comments and some questions in uh, below and I'll answer your questions. I always get around to answering all the comments. As I said earlier, we're growing the channel to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So please, if you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe, especially if you like the content, then please, then please click like, select all so you receive notifications of all incoming videos, some great new content to come, especially when the weather warms up a bit and we can get the 458 out and we can do the first run and get some great content for you. For those who've suffered from this um, unfortunate times of this of this virus, then I hope you're I um, hope you're recovering well and um, best of health to all my subscribers and to everybody out there who's watching the videos. Um, take care. Um, please also, um, we've actually got quite a good subscriber base on Instagram, so please make. Sure. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care, and we'll see you in the next video.